Should I shoot 1,700 feet per second ammo, or is 1,500 good enough? What's the minimum penetration in ballistic gel needed to ensure lethality? How many foot-pounds of energy are required for a pellet to kill a duck? All excellent questions, answers today. I'm Joel Strickland, and this is part seven of my shotgunning series, right here on Surviving Duck Season. Thanks for watching. Now there are a lot of misunderstandings, assumptions, and untruths that are rampant in the shotgunning world. Many are created by people who have an agenda or companies trying to sell us products. Still others are made by well-meaning people who just use false logic or an experience that they think they had and attribute that to the truth. Then it gets passed on. Before you know it, everyone believes it. Today, we're talking about some of that. Up first, speed kills. This is the mantra of the shot shell industry and has been for decades. Today, muzzle velocities of 1400 feet per second seems kind of slow. More common are speeds of 15, 16, and 1700 feet per second at the muzzle. They, whoever they is, have told us that it's necessary to shoot faster to kill ducks, especially with steel. They also promote it, as if it were a fact, that it's important to shoot faster so you can decrease your lead when you shoot. So, is all of that true? Does speed kill? Let's look at what happens to the shot as it flies down range. I recently used a high-speed camera to shoot video of the shot string, seen on previous videos. Now we learned lots of other information from using the same technology and one of those things was discovering the true speed of pellets as they flew in front of the camera. And we also use accurately measured background markers on the black and white backgrounds taking into consideration the force perspective with the center mass of pellets being approximately 36 inches from the background. The time is known to the exact frame because the technology tells us that. To double check our findings, I ran the calculations also at the muzzle, where I could verify the speed from both the manufacturer's muzzle velocity printed on the box and my own chronograph readings, which were almost the same. So here's the results from some of our testing. The velocity of steel slows more than that of denser metals, but also the faster you start, the quicker it slows. For example, this load of number four steel is 1,500 feet per second at the muzzle. It's 664 feet per second at 40 yards, losing 56% of its speed. If we look at the 1,400 foot per second muzzle velocity on the number four steel, we see that it only loses 20 feet per second at 40 yards. Not much difference. Let's look at some other loads for comparison. Here's the Winchester Bismuth number four. It has a muzzle velocity of 1,450 feet per second. At 40 yards, it's 745, about 50% loss in speed, but 81 feet per second faster than the steel. When we look at number four Boss Copper Plated Bismuth, shot at 1,350 feet per second, we see that its terminal velocity at 40 yards is 717. That's only a 47% loss in speed and only 28 feet per second slower than the Winchester Bismuth and 53 feet per second faster than the steel number fours with a muzzle velocity of 1500 feet per second. So you can see the difference in all of that. It's very minuscule to shoot faster. Now it's also worth mentioning that often the higher velocity shells have more recoil or felt recoil. That Winchester Bismuth, for example, it's really tough on the felt recoil. Like, not at all fun to shoot. Mercy, golly. Mm. Let's add a steel number two to the comparison. This number two steel that starts out at 1500 feet per second is 724 at 40 yards. More than half of its speed is lost. But this 1400 feet per second number two steel is 707 at 40 yards, which is actually under 50% speed loss and a negligible difference in speed between the faster steel or either of the bismuth loads. So why does it matter? Patterning. If you've been watching my other videos, you know how much I talk about that wing shooting is all about pattern. 
In most of the pattern testing, when I compare different muzzle velocities, the slower load wins the pattern game. So, if it's about pattern, then you need to forget about the speed kills marketing baloney, because it doesn't. Oh, one more thing on speed. Many guys claim that they need to retrain themselves to shoot when they go with a different speed or different ammo. Well, obviously knowing all of this information that I just shared with you kind of blows that idea out of the water. You're talking about maybe an inch or two in difference in lead. Well, what about TSS? Let's look at that. This is apex number eight at 1500 feet per second at the muzzle. But at 40 yards, it's 898 feet per second. Whew. Remember, it's number eight, so it's very, very small, but it only loses 40% of its speed at that distance due to the fact that it's 18 gram density shot. Now, in this case, you will see a difference in at least a foot in your lead at 40 yards compared to other shells, and definitely more the further you shoot. Now, I wanted to take just a second to let you guys know how much I appreciate you uh, watching these videos and being supportive of what I'm doing here. From time to time, I have shirts and caps and other things for sale on the website. If you want to help me make more videos like this one, a great way to do that is pick up a cool piece of merch to show your support. If you're watching this video in the fall or winter of 2022, I have quarter zip hoodies just like this one for sale. They're very high quality, sporting the Surviving Duck Season logo. I appreciate your support. You can find them at survivingduckseason.com. Also, there's a link in the description part of this video. So speed doesn't kill, we know that. But speed does factor into kinetic energy. Some call it pellet energy or strike energy. It's all the same. How many foot pounds does it take to kill a duck? That's a common question that I hear. Their assumption is that there is an exact value of energy that a pellet needs to deliver to kill a duck. There's not. Not one minimum number that would cover every size and type of pellet. Now, on the last video, I did a lot of calculations and many of you appreciated that. Uh, you've also asked for me to give you more, including those for kinetic energy. Yeah, I wanted to know too. Knowing the kinetic energy of a pellet is not hard, but there's a lot more to lethality than just kinetic energy. And that's a fact. But arriving at a definitive answer and an equation so we can calculate for lethality, that's where I got lost weeks in making this video. Too many variables and no exacts that can be worked out. Oh, there's a few experts who believe there is, but those experts don't agree with one another on how to do that. Then there's other experts who say there's no definitive way for you or I to factor for lethality. So, do you see my problem? Too many experts. Uh, in my research for this series, I've read published papers from scientific studies, uh, many articles, a few books. I've also spoken with many shotgun, shot shell, and ballistic experts and even consulted with a nuclear engineer and a published professor of mathematics and statistics. Yes, there's lots of equations and other things that go well past kinetic energy. We see terms like sectional density, a ballistic coefficient, penetration, and for days I was working out equations to the point that my mind was melting. I finally had to stop and ask myself, how many people care or would even try to work this stuff out for themselves? I expect there's probably three of you. <laughs> Edward Lowry was a highly respected shot shell ballistician during the 20th century, and he was the research director at Winchester Western and participated in several groundbreaking studies in the 1960s and 70s. He published a lot from that research. Here's one of the many conclusions that he came to. If two pellets deposited the same amount of lethal energy, the smaller one's energy is more lethally effective. Basically, the smaller pellet has an easier time penetrating and therefore it's more lethally effective. The bigger the pellet, the more energy is needed for it to penetrate and make it lethally effective. That's really good to know. One thing that Lowry helped to develop from his research is a ballistic calculator that was a Windows-based program it's been many years ago and it's no longer available today. 
there have also been other programs developed over the past 20 years that claim to do the same thing. Essentially, you input what type of load you shoot and a few other variables, and the calculator tells you what happens at multiple distances, like downrange velocity, kinetic energy, time of flight. One particular program, KPY Ballistic Calculator, also tells you how much penetration in ballistic gel you could expect to get with your desired range. Well, that sounds too good to be true. Unfortunately, you can't get that program anymore either. I've tried. Now, the KPY calculator's gel penetration results are based on the assumption that 1.5 inches of penetration in ballistic gel is lethal for a pellet to kill a duck, provided that it hits the duck in the right spot. 2.25 inches for a goose. I have no idea where they get this from. As far as I can tell, there are no scientific studies that substantiate that. So I don't know if it's right or not. I've had some experts say that yes it is, and then some that say no. I've seen some people posting online in different groups of the results that they got using the KPY calculator. I was curious for myself, so I took some of the lows that the guys posted about, knowing the penetration that they said they would get from using the calculator. And then I shot the same load into ballistic gelatin to see if I'd get the same penetration. And you know what? It was completely different. I mean, like every single shot was double-ish. If they said 1.5 inches, I'd get three inches. Now I do know a little bit about ballistic gel. I've been buying the 10% gel because it's the most accepted medium for testing hunting ammo but something wasn't right. So I called Clear Ballistics, the people who make this stuff, and talked with the owner. It was a very interesting conversation, and I learned a lot about ballistic gel. Now before 1986, ballistic gel was kind of all over the place as far as a standard goes. Uh, people made their own ballistic gel, which was organic and had to be kept cool. And it was always suspect of not providing accurate comparable results between batches. In 1986, the FBI saw the need for a proper testing medium that they could use that would accurately and consistently show results comparable with shooting into flesh. The result is what we use today called 10% FBI ballistic gel. Now, the most recent products available is synthetic and doesn't need to be kept refrigerated. There's also a 20% gel that they make that's used by the military and NATO. It's used for higher velocity ammo and ammo with full metal jacket, that sort of thing. Uh, Clear Ballistics told me that there's a very small amount of the 20% sold, and most of that is sold in Europe. Almost all of the gel sold in North America is the 10% gel, and that's what they recommend for hunting ammunition tests. I did find out later that the KPY calculator was using 20% gel as their standard, which is fine, except if you're shooting gel, testing your results and not using the 20% gel, your numbers will be wrong. Also, it seems to me that because of this standard of 1.5 minimum inches of penetration floating around that may or may not be true, and the majority of guys who are buying 10% ballistic gel, they may think that the 1.5 inches of penetration would be enough, which it wouldn't. Here's the thing to know about ballistic gel. It looks cool. It's interesting to see, but ballistic gel is not alive. It doesn't bleed, it doesn't have skin, feathers on it, and it doesn't have bones. You can't kill it. <laughs> so that means you really can't truly compare your shots in gel with shots in a live duck. But can you use it to determine penetration comparing different ammunition? I asked a few experts that. Again, some said yes and some said no. One of the expert ballistic researchers that I spoke with told me that ballistic calculators on the internet or computer programs predicting what a pellet would do at a distance or using ballistic jelly was all ridiculous and invalid. He pointed me to a lethality chart that was online. It's copyrighted and although it would be considered fair use for me to use it, I'm electing not to put it on this video. But you can easily look it up by typing in Google non-toxic lethality table. Now this expert 
told me that it's the only valid guide that would tell you for sure if a load would be lethal at a certain distance. Well, the problem is, it's vague. The chart was developed with empirical data, thousands of live shot mallards. That's, that's awesome. But except for testing heavy shot, the largest part of the testing on waterfowl was done before 1990. And on the table that I'm talking about, we only see suggestions for steel and heavy shot. Well, what about everything else? Tungsten alloys, there's a bunch of them, TSS and bismuth. The chart was created in 2012 and re-released in 2016. Many more shot options have been made available since then. So I asked him, what if I took a number two steel that the chart says is lethal at 45 yards and then shoot it into ballistic gel and then shoot others in the same gel at the same distance to see how they compare. If any of the other loads were equal to or exceeded that one, it should kill a duck, right? His response was, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's not scientific and it can't possibly predict lethality. I asked other experts the same question and they said, if you have a known lethal load, you can certainly use ballistic gel to compare it with others. It's apples to apples. I'm not interested in performing a scientific study to be published. I'd just like to know what a shot shell made after 2011 looks like compared to a known lethal load. There's new technology, new pellet types and shapes, new composites, and I want to compare them before I shoot them at a duck. The problem I have with that table and really all of the other tables, you know, the things on the side of a shotgun shell box. While they do offer some suggestions, all we get is multiple sizes offered as good or lethal. For example, large ducks over decoys, you can use steel shot from number twos through number sixes from 20 to 45 yards. Heavy shot fours to sixes at the same distance. I can tell you that steel number sixes are not your 45 yard loads. That is ridiculous. And the charts are vague. I do believe there is some real value to this table though, and that is giving recommendations to the minimum number of pellet hits in a 30 inch circle to ensure lethality. I look for at least 90 hits for my personal patterning. I'll get more into that on my next video. The bottom line on this is there may be a few of you like me who wants to test out everything and get into the weeds, but for the rest of you, it's not necessary to do anything more than pattern your gun. The charts and tables that we discussed, vague as they are, are still a good starting point at least. And you don't have to do all the gel tests or equations like I've done to figure out lethality, but it is interesting. I do believe gel can be useful if used in the right way in comparing different shells. I'll continue using 10% ballistic gel, testing different ammo. I don't feel confident though that the penetration depth of 1.5 inches or 3 inches or really anything is going to be a very accurate standard. But if you do, please remember that the 10% gel is going to give you double penetration if you're using that 1.5 inch minimum standard. So what do you think about using ballistic gel to compare a known lethal load versus one in question? Let me know down in the comments. So how do you know which pellet, load, and even length of shell to use? Well, my next video, it settles it all out. If you wanna know what's best for you, that's gonna be the video that will help you dial it in. God bless you. I'm Joel Strickland, and I'll see you there.